With most gaming products, you're getting some type of advantage by going with it. When looking at a gaming mouse, you're going to get more buttons, more features. But when looking at gaming chairs, that is not going to be the case. So in this video, I'm going to give you five reasons why you should never buy a gaming chair. So the first thing that we're going to touch on is the bucket seat design and the fact that it's completely useless for an office environment. So you can see both of our chairs here, the GT racing chair is about $100 to $200. Then the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022, which is five to $600, widely regarded as the best gaming chair out, which I personally agree with, but you can see that they both have this very typical racing style bucket seat design with pronounced side bolsters on the back and then flared up edges on the seat. And truth be told is gaming chairs were first developed to kind of go with a racing simulator setup. That's why we have companies, the first companies named DX Racer, Need for Seat from Maxnomic, and that is because these chairs were specifically made for racing style games like Need for Speed, Tokyo Drift, things like that. And that's why we see these chairs looking like this, that you could feel the way that you'd feel when driving a sports car or a race car. But in a typical office environment, you're gaining nothing by going with this and you're just getting a less comfortable, less ergonomic experience overall. And that's going to start with the seat because when you sit down in the seat, the seat looks fairly wide, pretty big, but you're going to be very, very restricted because you can only use the padding. You cannot extend your legs out to this portion because this is a rigid metal design. It's very hard, very uncomfortable. If you get outside this, it's not comfortable to lean on. So you're very restricted and the seats on these types of designs are going to be very uncomfortable in my opinion. And you're also going to get the same problem with the backrest because you get these flares here. So for me personally, get the lumbar pillow out of the way a little bit. When I lean back, they make contact with me on my shoulders. Now I'm 5'9", you know, 170, 180 pounds. So pretty average size. And this chair just wouldn't fit me. I can't use this chair comfortably. You're going to alleviate a little bit of the problem when you upgrade to the Secret Lab chair because they've kind of done away with the metal bolsters in the seat, but you're still gonna get the same problem with the back. So this overall racing style design that is basically meant to protect you when you are in a sports car from you know, taking big turns and going fast really isn't gonna serve you any purpose in an office and it's just gonna make you more uncomfortable. The next thing that I really hate about gaming chairs is going to be the lack of overall back support. And this is just going to start with the basic flat backrest design. You can see on the GT racing chair, the backrest is completely flat. There's no natural curve in it to help support your spine in that natural angle. Same thing with the Secret Lab chair. It's going to be a completely flat design. Now, the problem with this is that you're not going to get any natural support and their solution to giving you support is on most models, giving you a really cheap pillow. And now this is meant to give you lumbar support, but it compresses so easily and it's not super good at holding its position. These straps kind of move up and down even when you're in the chair. And so it's sitting in this, all it really does is kind of force you to sit in the chair more forward instead of giving you back support. And it's really hard to scoot all the way back and actually put this in a comfortable spot to feel like it's giving you lumbar support. And if you do get it into a comfortable spot, it only takes you know half an hour to an hour before this pad is compressed and you're just leaning up against the backrest. So you're not getting great lumbar support. And because you do not have a natural curve on the backrest, your upper back is also not being supported very well. You can see that when I do use the lumbar, my shoulders don't even touch the backrest unless I force them back like this, which is pretty uncomfortable to do. Now, if you upgrade to a chair like the Secret Lab Titan, which is going to be much more expensive and one of the only chairs out that has adjustable lumbar, you can dial in the lumbar up and down and in and out, which I'm a huge fan of on the Secret Lab chair, but you're still going to get the problem with the completely flat backrest aside from the lower back. So not a great design for overall back support, but a little bit better for the lumbar region than the cheaper chairs that we see. The next reason not to buy a gaming chair is your limited range of movement while sitting in the chair. We're seeing a huge movement in the ergonomic office chair industry towards chairs that are very flexible, giving you the ability to move, stretch, use the chair in different positions to promote that, promote that movement throughout the day, which is much better for blood flow, circulation, and just being comfortable while you're working. With the bucket seat design and the rigid seat 
and back because of the side bolsters, you're not going to get any freedom of movement. And this is going to apply to both chairs. Even upgrading to the five six hundred dollars Secret Lab isn't going to give you a flexible chair. So if you want to do things like move around and stretch, you're really not going to be able to because you are fixed in this position. You cannot go outside the chair. The chair is not going to flex. It's not going to bend. So it's a very rigid experience as compared to ergonomic chairs. A lack of adjustments is often going to be a problem on most of these racing style gaming chairs and that's going to come from the mechanism design and the bucket racing seat design that we've already addressed. So starting with the mechanism, almost all of these gaming chairs are going to have a really low end mechanism, a swivel tilt or center tilt mechanism. And what that means is that you are going to recline from a position directly under your seat. And the problem with this is it's the most difficult mechanism to actually recline in. You have to put a lot of effort in because you do not have weight distributed behind the cylinder and it's not a synchro tilt where it's moving the back more than the seat. And so it's really hard to recline. Your knees come up, they can often bang into your desk. So I'm not a fan of this design for an ergonomic chair. I would much more prefer something like a knee tilt on the Secret Lab chair if you're willing to upgrade to a price like that. But even more so, I would prefer a synchro tilt mechanism to the knee tilt on the Secret Lab. The next thing that you're going to be missing out on on all of the gaming chairs that we've tested is going to be a seat slider. So you are going to be stuck with the seat that you get in terms of depth. You're not going to be able to adjust the seat depth like we see on a lot of ergonomic chairs, which is a problem. The other problem with the gaming design is you're not going to be able to get an adjustable headrest. You can get a pillow like the Secret Lab chair has here or the GT Racing chair. We just couldn't find it. And you can move this around a little bit, but it's not going to be tilt adjustable, height adjustable, like you can get on an ergonomic office chair. And you're also going to be missing out on some of those specialized adjustments that you might be looking for, aside from the Titan, things like two-way adjustable lumbar, forward seat tilt, things like that that are going to get you into a specialized position that the racing chairs just simply cannot offer. And the last reason you should not buy a gaming chair is that you are often getting very poor warranty coverage. So when we look at the GT racing chair, you're only going to get one year of coverage on this chair. And we look at the Secret Lab chair, you're only getting three years of coverage on this chair, even though it's over $500. Now, both of these companies do, in my opinion, a bit of a shady tactic to force their customers into advertising their chairs. And that is if you upload a picture of your chair with a review to some form of social media, they will extend your warranty. For the GT Racing, they'll go from one year to two years. And for the Secret Lab chair, they'll go from three years to five years. Now, this is something that's only really done in the gaming chair business, mainly because it's not a great business tactic to force your customers to review your chair to get the full warranty, which is provided by most reputable companies without having to do that. If you're looking for information on gaming chairs versus office chairs, check out this video.